Hello everyone and welcome to another Genshin Impact Theory video. Today, I'll be talking about the Hexen Circle and the recent lore drop about them, as well as how they could tie into the story of Fontaine. This is also the first video in my Fontaine Speculation miniseries, where I'll be going over my ideas on the nation of Hydro. With all that said though, let's get right into the video. To start off, I'd like to recap what we know about the Hexen Circle. A lot of information about this secret society was recently revealed to us in version 3.5's Windbloom's Breath event. Before this event, we only had a few hints about this group here and there, with this being the first time they've been put in any sort of spotlight. From the cutscene we were given, it appears that there are eight seats in the Hexen Circle, as there were eight witches around the circle at the beginning. There are only seven seats at the table, however, so perhaps they never met up all at once. Of them, we know of six characters that either hold or have held seats in the past. They are Alice, or A, who is Klee's mother, Barbaloth, or B, who is Mona's master, Ryandotter, or R, who is Albedo's mother, Nicole, or N, who spoke to us at the end of version 3.3's Interlude R Conquest, I, Ivanovna, N, or J, who Scarlet is the successor of, and Anders daughter, or M, the author of The Boar Princess. Mona, Scarlet, Klee, and Albedo are not members of the Hexen Circle, although they do have ties to it. It is possible some of them may join at some point, especially Mona and Scarlet. Scarlet has even been acknowledged by Alice as much more fascinating than any of Jay's other successors, so to her becoming a member is even more likely. We also learned that the Hexen Circle once challenged the animal Archon, but he insisted they make music, not war, and so they didn't fight. After this, they would have their tea parties in various locations, with a pledge to never fight amongst themselves. Additionally, some members of the Hexen Circle were mortal and have passed away, such as J, and likely M as well. Either way, the members of the Hexen Circle are extremely powerful, Alice has been described as near-omnipotent by Albedo, and Albedo himself was created by Rhyndaughter, who also created many other beings such as Durin and the Rift Wolves. Barbaloth is also an amazing hydromancer, as she trained Mona, and Nicole literally spoke into our heads. Lisa has also told us that the group conducts Erminsel explorations, which would help explain why they have so much knowledge and power. Lisa herself is not part of the Hexen Circle, and wishes to have no part of it, even saying the idea of Erminsel explorations and their tea parties leaves her feeling cold. Alice herself said that the Hexen Circle is a secret society, and they do have a so-called Great Sinner amongst their ranks, that of course being Rhyndaughter. With all of this, and the fact that they tried challenging Barbados at one point, the Hexen Circle may commit blasphemy in some way getting the attention of a certain god. This certain god would of course be the god of justice, otherwise known as Fosalor, the Hydro Archon of Fontaine. We got a bit of information about her from Nahida, who tells us that even though she doesn't personally judge people, she is still present at most trials, and as Archon, still has the right to influence the final verdict. She also tells us that the one who does judge people is primarily the Chief Justice. This Chief Justice is named Nouvellet, and they have some words about the Hydro Archon as well. They gave the quote for Nahida's official announcement, where they praised Nahida's sense of responsibility even as the youngest of the gods. However, they also mention a certain other person, likely Fosalor, who they say is so prone to hysterics. This is quite interesting, as it suggests that the Hydro Archon will be more unpredictable than previous Archons, which could lead to some unforeseen and potentially dangerous consequences. We also know that the Lock Folk, such as the Oceanid next to Jinxa Village, have cut ties with Fontaine following the God of Justice coming to power. The Lock Folk were spies for the original Hydro Archon, so perhaps the original Archon was a god of espionage or something else that would act as an opposite to justice. That's for another video though. 
for now, we have a few more quotes about the God of Justice. In the Travail trailer, Dainsliff says, The God of Justice lives for the spectacle of the courtroom, seeking to judge all other gods. But even she knows not to make an enemy of the divine. We also get more information about her from the Varunata Lazarite Gemstone, which is the Hydro Ascension Gemstone. My ideals have no stains, I must correct you. People here bear no sins in the eyes of the gods. Only laws and the tribunal can judge someone. They can judge even me. So praise my magnificence and purity. Dainsliff's quote seems to hint towards the involvement of higher powers in Fontaine's story, which I will go over in another video, but it also shows how ambitious Fosalor can be. She wants to judge all other gods, and potentially other powerful beings as well. Of course, other powerful beings would include the Hexen Circle, and likely the Fatui Harbingers as well. Anyways, as for the gemstone quote, it shows that she prides herself in her purity, saying that neither her nor her people bear sins in the eyes of Celestia. She says that only the laws and the tribunal can judge someone, likely referring to Celestia holding the final verdict with any sin to that. Like I said, Fontaine's story may involve higher powers. In the game, it appears that Celestia is currently moored above Fontaine, so perhaps the gods of Celestia will finally awaken during the Fontaine Archon quests, with the god of justice forced to confront justice towards herself. As I said earlier though, that's for another video. With all that said about the god of justice, I'd like to talk about why I think the Hexen Zirkle could have a role in Fontaine, after which I will discuss my ideas about their role in the plot. To start off this section, I'd like to talk about recent events and quests, and their importance. Of course, the Hexen Circle got a huge lore bomb in version 3.5's Windbloom's Breath event, but it also had a reference right before this. I'm of course talking about Nicole of the Hexen Circle, speaking to us in our mind at the end of version 3.3's Interlude Archon quest, while we were confused about the recent events with the Balladeer and the vase that Paimon knocked over. Before these, we had a few events with the relations to them, those primarily being with Alice in the Golden Apple Archipelago events, and a few other places here and there. Speaking of Alice, despite her playing a big role in the background of multiple events, we have never seen her, and have only heard her voice. From these events though, we learn that she is quite good with technology, making things such as Dodoco, the Dodo communication device, and a lot of the mechanisms scattered around the Golden Apple Archipelago. And of course, a nation with some of the most advanced technology in Tavat is Fontaine. We could potentially finally meet Alice in person in Fontaine, as she may travel there to study the technology they have to improve her own inventions. Additionally, she's not the only person related to the Hexen Circle who also has ties to Fontaine. Mona writes a column for the Fontaine newspaper, The Steambird, and it has been theorized that she may originally be from Fontaine. It would be interesting if we get both of them in Fontaine, and maybe even other members of the Hexen Circle, such as Mona's master Barbaloth. Getting briefly back to the events though, this wouldn't be the first time Hoyo has hinted towards the plot of future Archon quests through limited events. The story of Scaramouche was teased multiple times through the version 2 updates, from his brief appearance in the Archon quests to the Iridori Festival in 2.6. It was also hinted at with the repeated mentions of the Raiden Gakuden in both version 2.8's Summer Fantasia event and Kazuha's story quest. The situation with the Hexen Zirkle has so far followed a similar pattern in the version 3 updates, with Nicole speaking to us at the end of version 3.3's Interlude Archon quest, and the Hexen Zirkle lore bomb during Windbloom's Breath. Perhaps we may get another event referencing them, or maybe even a second act of either Klee or Mona's story quests before Fontaine releases. Speaking of Fontaine, I think it's time to get into some of my thoughts regarding a potential plot. First off, I'd like to mention the one and only Lieben, and his latest appearance in version 3.2's Marvelous Merchandise. In this event, he mentions a few details about Fontaine and what's happening there. He says it looks like dark clouds were gathering there, 
and that it feels oppressive and dangerous, like a storm is about to break out. He also mentioned that the locals were pretty antsy, and said that they thought judgment was soon to come or something like that. This is all we really get from him though. The line about judgment is likely referring to the Hydro Archon, and if we bring back Nouvellette saying that she is prone to hysterics, it certainly doesn't look good. Fosalor may be close to some sort of breaking point, where she tries to judge everyone and everything, which would include Celestia, the Fatui, and the Hexen Circle. For now, of course, I'll focus on the Hexen Circle. I think it would be interesting if Fosalor enacts a decree that the members of the Hexen Circle or other factions must be captured and judged due to their high levels of power, starting some form of witch trials. There were witch trials that occurred in France, the nation Fontaine is mainly based off of, so it is possible. As for why the Hydro Archon would target the Hexen Circle, for one, she is a bit hysterical and could be wary of their power. The Hexen Circle has challenged the Animal Archon before, and if you take into account their level of power, it would make sense that another Archon could be somewhat afraid of them and what they might try to do. Like I said earlier, Fosalor takes pride in her purity, so even the thought of an organization attempting to challenge her could have her wanting to judge them. Additionally, the Hexen Zirkle's motives are questionable at best, and they do have Rhine Daughter, a great sinner, among their ranks. It would then naturally make sense that the God of Justice would not look fondly upon this group. Perhaps one or more of their members, including Alice, Mona, or even Scarlet, could be brought to the court of Fontaine to be tried for their crimes. The Hexen Circle is good at staying in the shadows though, so you may be wondering how they would be caught. Perhaps the Fatui could have some sort of influence in the background here, working against the Hexen Circle and causing some of their members to be captured. This would heavily distract the Hydro Archon from the Fatui's plans, allowing them to have an easier time in obtaining the Hydro Archon's Gnosis. Alternatively, the Fatui could make a deal with the Hydro Archon, exchanging her Gnosis for members of the Hexen Circle. I'll talk more about the Fatui's role in Fontaine in a video next week, though. Getting back to the Witch Trials, though, some members of the Hexen Circle have committed great crimes, as I said, especially Rhindaughter. Like I said earlier, Celestia is currently moored over Fontaine, opening the possibility for Celestia to have some sort of role in these Archon quests. Perhaps Celestia themselves will decree that certain members of the Hexen Circle need to be judged, or Fosalor just thinks that this is what they would want. As for what would happen during these trials, perhaps Fosalor will go hysterical at some point, leading to unpredictable situations. She may even end up physically fighting against one or more Hexen Circle members. This could lead to the death of a Hexen Circle member, which would increase the tension between the two parties enormously. Perhaps the death of this member is actually what kicks off the Witch Trials, which is what the Fatui would take advantage of to steal the Hydro Archon's Gnosis. There are a lot of possibilities for this plot, and I'll cover my thoughts about it as a whole in a big video after I talk about all the individual subjects. For now though, that's all I have to say about the Hexen Zirkle and the role in Fontaine. I think it would be quite fascinating to have some sort of Witch Trials, and I'm really hoping we get something like that. The Hexen Circle on its own is such a fascinating subject, and I'm looking forward to getting more information about them and meeting their members. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Hexen Circle and their potential role in Fontaine in the comments below as well. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Sources and further readings are of course in the description if you want to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.